always drawn to any dance. I used to do a lot of jigging, uh, Métis jigging, because I'm a uh, Métis too. And then square dancing, you know, and then modern dancing. So I was always involved in dancing. We would do our, our uh, modern square dancing, but there would be a time when we were taught to sit and watch the elders do their traditional dancing. Now, our traditional dances up north are not powwow. Powwow came from the States when Sitting Bull came over, and that's when powwow was introduced to our people. But our dances are more like the coastal dances, where we do tell a story. Well, when I married my husband, it was our duty to, to teach the culture. And I think, when I think about it, it's just like, say, um, a prince marrying a princess, and you have to be, be groomed to be a princess, to be a chief's wife. Well, I had to be groomed by my mother-in-law, and there was we had to attend functions, the feasts, and different things that I had to learn about. And part of it was teaching the traditional dancing and songs, because every dance and song tells a story of, of uh, say, we do the Madig dance. It tells a story about the Medique and why the Medique, um, you will remember that, why the Medique saw their princess because they were abusing the food that our Creator had provided for us. So are these teachings in each song and dance that they do. <laughs> he was quite, um, he was a university graduate in anthropology. And so he did a lot of, com we did a lot of community work. He was always, always involved. He was a, a president of Knights of Columbus, president of the Alliance, and of course our own Native Benevolent Association, which we started in Prince Rupert. And then he was on the uh, board of directors for our Native Society. He was a great man, a kind man, compassionate to his, to his people and to all, all people. We were involved in the city of Prince Rupert and we were involved with um, Iona. Yeah, and and uh, I guess she would come to us for advice. And Mayor Lester uh, approached me one day and asked me if there was anything that uh, our people could do for the city of Prince Rupert. I think Prince Rupert should be very, very proud. The culture started there in Prince Rupert. And so I thought, well, what could we do? And then I remembered when I was a young girl, we had what we called the Trappers Festival once year in, Prince, in Manitoba, and we would celebrate for a whole week. So I thought, well, you're at the beginning of salmon season, maybe we can do something then. So we started, we did, there were no carvers, there were no dancers, there was just nothing, really. So I went to the museum and asked them if I could borrow some artifacts, and they said, no, we don't lend them out. So the following year, I went to all the collectors in Prince Rupert and borrowed, and that, that was my display. And that was the beginning of our dance group. And we asked Grandma Harris if she would teach us, and she said, oh yes, yeah, she was willing to teach us. So we started just my family, and then it grew and grew and grew, and then I was invited to go to Alaska to teach. And we started a group in Metlakatla, Alaska. When I began, I had my own family, but I, I let everybody, the Haidas and the Nishkas and the Shimshans, all dance with us because were we didn't have enough dancers. So as time went on, they, they uh, started to start their own groups. You know, there's the Haida group now, the Nishkas and the Shimshan. But I involved all nations when I first started. <laughs> I can 
my husband was working with her. And um, he came home one day and he said, uh, I'm teaching the boys how to do this song. Would you like to come and help me? So I went and I, and I said, that's not the right way. So I went over and I started helping, I started the dance group with her. I was thinking about it the other day. I would, I had a little cot in the, in our rumpus room, and I'd go down there to do my laundry. Saturday morning, I think. I wonder who's sleeping there tonight. Somebody would bring someone home, you know. It's always a stranger in that bed. And the young lady that I saw at the, at the basketball tournament just before I left, she said to me, "What I remember about your house." your home. I just loved going there, she said, because there was so much art upstairs and downstairs there was always dancing and singing. And then after that there was sewing and getting ready for your, we called them Indian days at that time, it's Aboriginal day. That grew into Aboriginal day. <laughs> I was really surprised when her and Andy came and said that they were going to continue it. And I thought, I was very proud. I'm very proud of my son-in-law. I call him my awesome son-in-law. He's done so much for the family and to help revive it and to continue teaching. It's the duty of an auntie and an uncle to teach their young nieces and nephews because that's who takes your titles. So that's what Margaret Ann and Andy are doing. They're teaching their young nieces and nephews to continue on the culture. It's changed a lot. And also they have more, I don't know, they, they're more um, artistic in their regalia making and we, we just knew how to do the one design, and now their designs are so elaborate and beautiful. It's really beautiful to see how, how their dance group is, has improved. I know that it'll probably continue, you know, even after Margaret Ann, because some of the, my grandchildren or the granddaughters say, you know, I think I have to keep this up, Grandma. But when I look at my granddaughters and my daughters and my grandsons up there and I think, and people say this to me, you've got a beautiful, beautiful family. And, and I have, and I'm so proud of them.